Good day, everyone. This is our weekly uh, <clears throat> Media Over Quick virtual interim. Um, this will be our last one before our in-person hybrid interim in Seattle next week. Let's see if I can advance the slide. There we go. This is the note well. Um, I, probably everyone has seen it before, but this just talks about intellectual property rules and conduct when you participate in an ITF meeting. If you haven't seen it before, type that into a search engine and you will be able to read to your heart's content. Um, as we have in previous weeks, um, we are doing chat in MeetEcho, which is what you use to get the, the link to this meeting. We will do queuing um, in, in, uh, here in Google Meet in addition to, uh, uh, you know, obviously all the AV. This is the agenda today. Um, we're going to come back to this cash expiration issue and try to close it. Um, I, I think we had some interesting discussion at the very end of last week, kind of trying to tease out the, the remaining objections, and we're going to see, I think that Al and I are going to try to see what those objections are and if they're going to block just commit, you know, sub submitting something or not. And then uh, if time allows, we're gonna have a little, uh, hopefully a brief discussion about MLKT terminology, just so we can stop spinning our wheels on that. Would anyone like to bash the agenda? Uh, I maybe want like a couple minutes just to prime people for next week. Um, we can do it at the end, prior, okay. before or after terminology. Sounds good. We need to describe um, the link for that is, you know, on the data tracker meeting page. Is someone willing to take notes for us today? This meeting is recorded, so really the, the main things are covered, the main points in the decisions. Uh, this is will i'll volunteer to scribe i i'm having trouble finding the tracker page but I'll, I'll keep notes on my own doc and then add them afterwards if that's okay that's that's very helpful well um thank you uh i mean I, it would be great if people could inspect you know be able to see what you're doing and update their stuff but uh, you know the next best thing would be that maybe we can get you the link to that in the chat um yeah, are you to take up the link and put it in the chat and not okay. do the like wrong week like i did two weeks ago Okay, so Alan, you're on that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks again, Will. That's that's great. Okay. All right. Um, with that, I think we are done with slides, uh, or at least chair slides. So um, is Ian on yet? Ian is not on yet. Uh, where we had where we had left was that there was a, a PR that Ian had on. Um, was a cash duration, I think is what it was called. Um, we had a little meeting with, with our editor uh, on Monday, and we decided that based on the input from last week, a better starting point was the PR that you just saw on the agenda, which is 448, uh, which I think Victor is the author of. Ian, would you like to call that up? Uh, yes, I can call that up. Um, although, so I, I meant to make some modifications to it, but I thought instead of making them, I want to go over it in, the, in this call and we can discuss them because okay. I thought it'd be a little bit faster because um, let me grab a slide that I made that is very fast. All right, while you're making slides, um, Alan also submitted, uh, circulated a, a use cases document for this general space of like timing out objects at relays. Um, there, there are different things that people are trying to do and what we're actually I think we're addressing two of them here. One is the the hint to caches that something is worthless and could be thrown away at a certain time. And then the second thing is, uh, I think we'll articulate a use case that due to contractual reasons, you know, an object cannot be delivered off, off, off after some clock time. Um, and I think if I, if I understand correctly, this PR addresses both of those. I does not address the, I don't want this anymore because I'm done with it uh, use case. Uh, because you know it's it's too late because of you know real time uh, this real time call or something. Are we about ready to share Ian? Oh, Alan, go ahead. I was just, just since you mentioned that, I mean, I, that was just me trying to like collect based on what I've heard other people say, 
And I did get some feedback on the list. Some people thought, well, two people responded, one of which saying like, this is a very poor job of writing down use cases. It sounds way more like solutions. Um, I only wanted to try to like get people thinking about this, like what are we trying to do? Or, and then think about if we have the right mechanisms to achieve those things. Um, I would love other people to kind of take this work and run with it. Uh, and hopefully the working group can agree what are the problems we're trying to solve and make it easier to solve them. Um, yeah, I, I do want to say like a little bit about rough consensus here. Um, I think sometimes we these proposals get feedback to like, I don't see the value of this use case, um, which is fine. But I think if, if we have at least at least some interest in solving a particular use case, um, I think that's enough to put it in the document unless uh, unless people feel that adding all this design pre creates an undue burden on people that are not interested in the use case. So, uh, you know, to the extent that people object to, to these sorts of changes um, or the just the whole spirit of these changes rather than the details, uh, it would be good to sort of separate out what what the problem is with with the use case and whether it solves the use case or and whatnot. OK, Ian, are we ready now? No. OK. Sorry, I'm muted. I was saying yes. Uh, let me. All right, cool. Um, I think that's all right. Let me. That... Oh, um, actually, before I start, I did also um, along the use case direction. I posted on on the list, but um, really having a good understanding of like what people want to send when um, would be enormously helpful. Um, I tried to go through this exercise for myself with a few use cases and not use the word priority at any point when I did it. And it was hard, but like, you know, like getting yourself in that mind frame of not the mechanism, but like if I have these three objects, which one am I sending first and why um, would be would be super helpful, I think, because, you know, I think there's probably like more than one collection of mechanisms that potentially could suit different use cases we've discussed. Um, and but like until we know until we know what we want to send we can't like be sure if the mechanism kind of achieves the desired like goals so i don't know i was taking a gander at that for myself um it's kind of like a use case um process but it's a little different because it really goes into kind of just this question of what do you send first so i digress uh um, All right. So max castration v2. This is very similar to the other um, max castration that was on the object. Sorry, on the stream header. Um, but based on what I heard, I think using the Victor approach of putting it in the subscribe OK um, is probably preferable. Um, I intended to keep it optional. Um, I'm going to clarify some things. Um, uh, based on talking to Victor for a while, I, I'm going to propose that actually we keep it on the object granularity. Um, I have another slide about like why I think that might be a better option or why Victor convinced me that that's a better option. Um, one nice thing is that there's no need to adjust the castration on each stream header and try to you know rewrite it every time, which was quite um, quite awkward feeling. Um, some possible changes. Um, currently, eight seconds. It could be milliseconds. I worry that's misleading um, because I don't. I mean, we're talking about like network hops that are, you know, tens to hundreds of milliseconds. I worry that milliseconds is kind of implying a level of granularity that probably really is a, difficult to achieve. Um, I haven't removed the absolute time yet. Um, I it's the perk is messed up you know, clock synchronization issues that we're all aware of, um, it's quite easy to implement. Um, so I don't have a problem with uh, keeping it or removing it, but I want to get feedback from the group. Um, I think those are the main things I needed to change. And yes, oh. someone have a question? Sorry, I can't see. Colin does. Yeah. Oh, Colin, go for it. Uh, I mean, I, I, oops, yeah. OK, yeah, we are confusing here because we can't. 
really enjoy. Um, okay, so um, I want to talk to the the milliseconds uh, one or whatever. Um, so totally agree. Not, no, none of these times are accurate to milliseconds or anything like that. But like our implementation experience is that we can't that the that if, if we're setting this at one second when really what we want is, is you know 200 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds if something's older than that like to be ignoring it um it 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 oh you know we now have a ton of traffic that is useless on the the link and um we get a lot our 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 measurement of useful traffic goes significantly down if we were if we were using you know, if we had a 50 millisecond jitter buffer and we were using 100 milliseconds here versus one second, we can show data that shows that the number of useful packets we get on a congested Wi-Fi link um, or a congested other link is significantly worse um, because you're sending stuff that has no chance of being of any use. Um, so, yeah, the the intent here, though, is for this to really address kind of what gets stuck in the cache and what can be requested, say, at some point in the near future and things like that, and less to address the um, delivery timeout sort of use case that we previously discussed, right? So, yeah. yeah I, I mean, look, fair enough. And I had that comment on here of like, I don't understand which, which like, is there another mechanism for addressing other things? Or is this, that looks like this mechanism could address those things or, or whatever. So I don't, I'm not, um, I want to make sure that we have a way of addressing that problem, um, and whether it's this way or not is is different. Um, yeah, so that's that's I, and that's that sort of makes it hard to decide whether I agree with this or not. Is because well, it depends on other things, um, right? Um, Welcome to the MoQ working group. Everything depends yeah, yeah. on something else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Alan, are you next? I, let me look at the queue. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I, I mean, I think Colin sort of hit the point, but I just wanted to. Drive. I mean, at least what I tried to do in, in that document was separate out the idea of like, how long should something be in cash is and separating it from when might something be useful to a subscriber and making and separating like a mechanism that would prevent you from receiving things that are no longer useful to you. And I think we probably need both mechanisms. Um, and it, I don't know if I thought of an example, which is like, you're watching a live stream or somebody watching a live stream might not want anything older than 10 seconds because they want to be live and they'd rather have things older than 10 seconds skipped over and and keep going but somebody else might join that live stream later and they might be 30 minutes behind and so they want they're like the publisher has reason why they want want that thing to be cached for 30 minutes because it's useful for people for 30 minutes and so that's why i think there's there's two different concepts here and i it took me a long time to realize that like, I think, and I don't have a ton of experience in the VC world, but my understanding is I, I get the sense that in the VC world, it's all one thing. It's like, it's just like how long you're in the cache is how long something is useful. And it's always this just like one thing. But I think that in MOQ, it might be useful to have two different concepts. Thanks, Alan. Um, Luke. Uh, yeah, just I guess for Helen, um, priorities will still, make sure that the important data gets delivered first. So this is more for like useless data that, but it's not it's not competing with the the other important data. Uh, so it's okay uh, if you don't reset this. I, I, Luke, I think you're just wrong on that. I don't think the data backs that up. I think if you have priorities and you're sending a whole bunch of low priority data on the same link at the same time as the high priority data, the low priority data does impact the low priority data. I think that's what the data shows. Okay, well, I don't think this was intended to solve that case where we're actively. Fair, fair enough. Yeah, that, that's okay. what I'm on the on the, I'm happy to put things in the draft. Yeah. That maybe and, and we can we can have, solve others. We can I'm have that discussion it. too, like because there is a there's a world like, do you prioritize things, or do you have aggressive timeout or TTLs like deadline based uh, deliveries? Um, and we've been focusing on the priority direction, and we could have the the deadline based thing, but I think this is this is meant to solve something else. Um, uh, and otherwise, I think the the other thing is um, putting it in the object level uh, can just sound weird to me. But um, let's let's sorry, I, I need to see the final proposal. You can I'll I'll uh, wait for my next slide. I'll, I'll I'll try to give you the Victor explanation, and you could see if you buy it. Well. Sure.
Will, you're up. Uh, sorry, is my mic working? Um, yeah, yeah on, a, on a couple of actions. On, on milliseconds, I get where Cullen's going. I think practically as a CDN, even if you signal 50 milliseconds, we're, we're not going to clear out the cache at that level, right? The, we, we've said before, caching is optional for relays, right? It's just a delivery performance feature. Nothing says you even have to cache. So this is just a hint. And as been mentioned several times, this is not affecting what objects are in the queue or any sort of prioritization. It's just a hint to the relay as to how long it might want to cache. So personally, I'd be fine with a second as being the threshold. If you want to signal 50 milliseconds, it's fine. But I think that's missing what this is, which is it's just a hint. Um, regarding the prioritization, I agree, these, these are decoupled issues. We're, this is not a fine grain control for dropping objects close to the head. It is simply a suggested duration. In terms of absolute versus relative, originally I was supporting absolute. I just wrote a comment on this prior to the meeting where I think it's okay not, not to do absolute. Um, even for the use case I suggested, which is a sports stream, which has a, has a sliding window of availability. What I think we should do is suggest the cache duration and make a, a rule that the relay must, at the end of that suggested cache duration, go back to origin to refresh the object. And that's the point at where the origin, which is authoritative for availability, can signal via our existing object status flag that this object's no longer available. And the relays can then cache that response for some period of time. I think that's that's that would meet my use case for the expiring sports, and I think it's a little simpler here. Uh, and it works. The the parallel works in the HTTP world, and I think we could start off with something simple like that, and then expand for embedded absolute if we really need to, and, and see that it's not working. Well, uh, so I, I disagree that there's any analogy for this in the HTTP world. So I think, Will, the, the HTTP world cache uh, semantics are about freshness. And I tried, I said this in, in my response, it was only 20 minutes ago, so I hope, but probably nobody read it, but I hope people try to sit back and actually think about what we're talking about. Being able to control cache for, for relay networks by the end application, we really, we've heard two use cases. We've heard billing, and we've heard limiting resources. So, you know, the, the relay networks self-managing their own resources. I think we should really talk about those use cases and not talk about this field, because I think we would arrive at different conclusions when we really explore those use cases in detail, because I don't see any HTTP analogy for, for uh, uh, an endpoint unable to issue a GET. You're, telling, you're saying that here, here, here is, the object has expired, so the endpoint says, unable to get anymore so that's not a 200 okay anymore that's you know it's, that's a 404 so what what i'm looking for is the found, it's, it's found, but 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 not going to be delivered it's there but it's not deliverable <laughs> the, it, yeah we don't have that though i want something that says you can have this this object is fresh or available for this period of time and after that you must ask me again but we don't and i we, might choose to refresh it or i might choose to deny it we don't have the freshness thing. We're immutable, right? Every one of our objects are immutable. So it makes no sense. The HTTP concept of, of, of cache doesn't make sense for us because our, our content can't change. It's only whether or not you're disallowed to use it. And I think that's policy. That's, you know, for, for your use case, the VOD use cases, that's a policy question. And like I said in my email, I think you have to solve that outside of the transport anyway, because if I got the, if I got the content at the client, you still want to expire the content after after 30 seconds or whatever it is. So the transport guarantee is not enough for the overall app policy guarantee. So you have to implement that policy guarantee anyway. What does the transport guarantee add you know, on, on, on top of that? I, I don't think it, it adds much, if anything. And yeah, we, let's, we need to debate this at the face-to-face, at the -face, I think, because we, we can't, yeah, clients can go do their own thing anyway, but we can still, as a delivery network, try to do the right thing most of the time, and we need a mechanism to do that, not deliver content that we intentionally know has expired. But um, I think it is good, like Alan tried to put out, is it, to try to separate the use cases of of this policy use case versus this uh, prioritization, or I don't want to clog up my bandwidth, a usable bandwidth use case. Those are those are two different use cases, and I think we should try to figure out what's the best solution for those. I, I agree. 
Great. They Great. Are. And this is not intended to, to solve the bandwidth one at all. Not even a little bit. Yeah. So then I think it's really only about the policy thing. Correct. That is correct. Yeah. Uh, Sue um, probably, uh, Ian, I, and I'll wait to uh, come back after the, if you explain the object granularity thing, because I think that's going in the right direction. Probably I'll come back after that. Mike, yeah. Alan, do people want me to go to the next slide and we can shortly discuss the the object versus um, forwarding preference thing? Or Alan, do you? I, I just wanted to reply, I think, the Mo is maybe dismissing the use case of resource management. And for people who run HTTP caches, I think it is use, even though there is not the mutability problem or the freshness problem in MOQ because things are immutable, I think having a hint that says this thing, you don't have to keep this thing after this amount of time is still a useful hint for running scalable caches. So. There's so I do think there's three, but um, let, me just, let me just clarify that. Are you proposing that that this hint would be normative in that you cannot you're prohibited from requesting the resource, or you or, or subscribers are still allowed to request the resource again, and relays will still have to forward those subscriptions up and then occupy bandwidth and cache occupancy for all of the relay networks upstream of it. It, it doesn't make sense for a a resource conservation point of view unless you have the prohibition that you're not allowed to subscribe again or to request that object again. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think what you're saying is that if something is available for an hour, you would never want to expire it after 30 minutes because then you would have to refetch it again. Is that what you're saying the concern is? Potentially? If and as was, worded, this is only a hint. And I request the resource, what happens? I think that if you request something that has, like the way I view caching is caching, and I think this is an HTTP view of caching, generally is that caches are optimizations. If somebody asks you for something and it's not in your cache, what do you do? You go ask somebody else for it. And that's what and, and that's how caching in, works, right? Now, uh, I get the sense that, this is what I was trying to say, that I get the sense that it's different in the VC caching world is very different in that the cache is much more authoritative you can you ask for something and if the cache doesn't have it, it's as good as gone. And I think that is like a key difference that has been the group has been like struggling with because there's the two views of what is a cache. And maybe like getting to the end of that will help us understand what mechanisms we need and what they mean. But in my view, like I think what this is proposing is only like you keep this thing in your cache after you've had it for so long, then you cache can throw it away if you want to manage resources. Caches can throw things away for other reasons. They ran out of space. Somebody else requested too much stuff. Their LRU, whatever. And just because you don't have it, you can still go get it if you need to. And I mean, we could clearly add a revalidation mechanism if we wanted to. That's you know, like HTTP, like that basically says like, how much longer can I cache this for? Like, did it change kind of thing? Like, I mean, but that's a future conversation. Um, Mike, so, so hi well, just some highlights from the chat. Um, uh, Sebastian asked, like, is there any harm in using milliseconds, given that we have 62 bits? Um, and then let's see, just a clarification. Yes, this proposal does not expire content after the duration. It's just a hint to the cache. All right, now we can move on to Mike. Yeah, I, I wanted to agree with some of the things that Mo was saying and also clarify that this is not the mechanism that will help us solve the policy issues. Um, it sounds like we were talking about that for a minute. And I think that uh, unless we're saying this is this is gone, this is gone, gone, um, it's not going to help us with policy at all. Um, you know, this is a hint. And I, I still think that this is not, uh, because it's an optimization, it's not something that we need right now. Um, and we should move on to the, the other things. Okay. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pop forward my slide and briefly talk about the object delivery stuff because I think I said it was going to. Um, so I was talking with Victor about this for about half an hour yesterday, the day before. Um, and he 
tried to convey that for low latency use cases with large GOPs, like video conferencing, um, you could have a GOP that lasts like, you know, minutes or something and only and put it all on one stream reasonably because it actually you know had a defensive structure like that. Um, and you might not want to stick all of that in cache. Um, now, on the one hand, this is a max value. So, you know, obviously you can expire whatever you want, but if the point is to like, you know, optimize resource consumption, then the idea, and I think this is what Colin was has been saying before, which is maybe you really do, there are use cases where you want to actually expire um, objects earlier in the group um, before later ones. Um, and that, you know, those use cases are valid. So like, or if say you were switching from like Wi-Fi to cell or something, the cache might actually be useful because you might like need to resync um, you know, from a second ago or something. Um, and instead of rejoining the whole thing, you could just kind of pick up where you left off when you're in it. So going. Ian, cl clarification question. So um, you just mean that the timer starts on each object delivery, not that you can define different timeouts for different yes. objects. Yes, the, okay. just, just like basically does the timer start when the object is received or when the group slash stream i guess track is received i mean this track one the track one in this case is kind of like wonky anyway um i would argue but anyway so so the the proposal is to make it per object which is goes against kind of where i was arguing last week but um one key difference here is there's not a value in every header and so before we were trying to like adjust that value as it went through the system and that you know was very awkward um Yes. Okay. Um, I will let CS go because he's in the queue. Uh, thanks, Ian. I, I think uh, the, the proposal that you're making ma makes uh, more sense um, uh, because um, we, this is kind of object property in a way that we want to make make sure that uh, a publisher, um, let, let, let's take a video conference publisher who wants to publish and they know that beyond certain point, this object does not make sense. Regardless of the, how they get transported, that object has time to live or, or the cache duration that we're talking about and making it an object a granularity helps in that scenario and also second thing is that for some of these cases like uh, like alan's chat proposal or something like that where the groups are never ending or it might stay for years or months together and you really cannot figure out you know what's the length of the group especially if each group is of uh, different size and different length there's no easy way to say when the group completes or for whatever reason you lose the end of the group message you never uh, there's, there's no guarantee that we can say that you know new group arrival means an end of the previous group or anything. So those kind of uh, edge cases are kind of resolved if if you move to object granularity, and making it as part of subscribe okay, which which makes each object uh, have certain uh, duration, is is an acceptable solution there. Sure. Thanks. Um, I also want to point out I like this because I hate having everything depend on what forwarding preference you're using because it makes my like head hurt and I'm tired. Like it's, I don't know, but that's personal. Come on. Um, it, yeah, I, I think we need this. And so some of it was what Suas already said, but uh, other things are um, DOS attacks as well too, is this makes it much easier to understand you know, the, I mean, you aren't just going to uh, uh, deliberate or in deliberately, you know, somebody accidentally never ends a group for many reasons. And then, you know, when can you time out the stuff in it? Um, so I think I really strongly go with um, we need to do it with the um, and, and I, I think it's a good distinction here. There's one thing of like, do you need to be able to set the number per object? And no, maybe not. Maybe you only need to be able to set it for everybody in a group. Um, although we have seen use cases which set it per per whatever, I don't know if they're important or not, uh, per object. But I think that the timer needs to start with the start of each object, basically, when it was, it was received is, is how we need to sort of execute these. Um, otherwise, it's just like that there's too many edge cases that are really hard to solve. Luke. So I think it's fine if you do this, but I think there's a real confusion of around why you're caching in the first place. Um, a lot of time you're going to be caching a group so that when a new subscriber comes in, they start at the beginning of the group. So explicitly saying I'm not going to cache the start of the group, I'm going to evict it so I can have older stuff in the cache, 
is just strange. Like it, you could do it certainly, but you're just wasting your cash. There is that use case that you mentioned. If you do have a your quick connection is severed, that's not even moving between cell, cellular and Wi-Fi. That is like brand new connection. You're reconnecting. You want to start from the end of a group. That is a use case for like having this per, per uh, object uh, cache granularity. But I think CDNs are going to cache the start of a group regardless. And I think this is going to get in the way. I think if you if a group is beyond the max object size, it's just going to be a bad behavior. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think it's OK if you do this on the object size, but I don't think anybody will implement it like that. You're going to cache the start of a group so that when a new subscriber comes in, you can serve it to them. I just don't see why you would cache the end of a group instead. Yeah, I, I do think that clearly like different values will probably cause CDNs to be, behave differently, right? If you provide a value of an hour, probably your cache behavior is going to be much more much coarser than you provide a value of like a second. But that's there you go. Alan, Alan, go for it. Okay, so a clarification question. So where it doesn't say here, but when does the timer start? Does it start when I receive the beginning of an object or the end of an object? Currently, the PR has it at the end of the object. OK. I think that's still sensible, although Colin says beginning. I don't have a strong preference between the two. OK, I think end, to me, end makes more sense. But I think it would really help to evaluate if it's clearly spelled out what when we think these timers start. Because I think that's something that people are trying to, to it, wrestle it, it is currently at the end and okay. the people. So and I, my intent was to not change that. OK. Um, the second one is um, we have object status is a thing that is cacheable. At least some statuses are cacheable. And I also get the, the sense that some people who want this not only want this thing to expire from cache, they also want the cache to transition the status from normal to not exist. Like it's not just that the thing is not in the cache and not all the time. I see Luke shaking his head. Not every time. There are some use cases where you just want it to go from in the cache to not in the cache. And I think there are other cases some people want it to go from in the cache normal to in the cache does not exist. And I, if people want that behavior, can they say that's what they want? Because I think people are talking around and they don't understand what the, that there's use cases for both. And I will say I do as an individual, agree with Luke that it seems very strange to be, if you put all this stuff in a group, to have the first half of the group gone from a cache and the second half there. And I'm not sure I understand how important that is. But then again, we can also just say like, here are the tools. And if you like shoot yourself in the foot, sorry, like your application doesn't work. Okay. Um, yeah, let's, let's uh, I don't know how we get like a read the room, but yes. Thank you for pointing out that like I think some people want it to transition to like not available, as in the like um, the as you said the, the object status, and then some people want it to like not be in the cache. Now, my mental model was it's just not in the cache. the The PR doesn't say anything about like it never being available any ever again. It just says like it's not there. If you want to figure out if it's still available, you have to go back to the backup stream now. If there are enough people who want it to transition out of the cache um, and into permanently unavailable, I think that is an interesting use case. But I think I don't think that alone solves all of the use cases that we have. Right? I think I think we need the one where it doesn't permanently disappear as well for like low latency live and like other fairly straightforward use cases. I mean, it seems. It seems certainly very relevant to me. But I don't know. Ian, do you have more slides? I do not. OK, I'm going to close the queue pretty soon because I'd like to try to get a sense of the group. Uh, so if you've if you, if you got something to say, like join the queue soon. Go ahead, Sukhas. Uh, I just wanted to kind of understand the, uh, to the Luke's, po Luke's point that, yes, um, these groups are the sync points where if, if you miss something, you want to go and get to the very beginning of the group or you prob probably in many cases you do store uh, the, the CDNs or the relays, re relays will store the entire groups or more than one group for that matter. Um, but, but that doesn't mean that um, the thing that we're addressing are objects. And, and each, each group, um, 
you, you basically go and store the things, uh, and 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 there will always be a mechanism in the in, in the uh, relay network to find out given a group and given object to retrieve uh, the things you need. I don't think so that would um, that that would what we are propo what is being proposed here does not do an implement uh, does not stop an implementation to do that where you can sync from the groups or anything, and each each object having its own granularity. And there's there's some use cases where uh, within a group. They might have um, objects with different cache uh, expiration, but but unless we go deep and figure out all those use cases, I don't think so. We need to complicate that at this point in time. But having this applied to all the objects in a group or, or for track for that matter makes sense. And also, I wanted to say on uh, Alan's point on should we start at the start of the group or, or object or the end of the object? Beginning of the object is also like it feels like that. That makes more uh, slight. I'm, I'm slightly inclined towards the beginning of the object. Just, just in the case that uh, anything we, we deal with, uh, we have to deal with end is open to race condition. Uh, uh, it might happen or it might not happen. Um, so if the object is there uh, and if it's not fully uh, received because of whatever reason uh, the publisher was not able to publish the entire object, no matter what, half object or something, it will get uh, expired after some point in time. So beginning of the object would, would probably be my inclination on that one. Okay. It was closed. Uh, queue is closed. Go ahead, Colin. I want to. Can I ask a follow-up question of uh, Suas um, on the beginning of object thing? Um, what happens if it starts at the beginning of the object? What happens if the time expires before you hit the end? Can you not forward it? I assume you can forward it. Yeah, I, I, I think if if a publisher has set in such a way that you know um, it 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 time expires even before an object is fully sent, I I, I think it's it's the cho choice that. Uh, the application has made. I, I would say if the, something has expired, you don't send it. It's, it's, it's the same rule that applies. Um, and most of the applications, like at least in uh, many of these cases that uh, we've been using, uh, we set in such a way that the object is valid uh, given a delivery uh, or, or you know, for for whatever sense it may, for whatever time it makes sense to be delivered and stored. So I, I would say if, if it expires for whatever reason, then probably that object is not useful beyond that that, that duration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Colin. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, just as a meta way of thinking about this is I, I think I tend much more towards um, this is a real-time system, which means there is data that is not useful. It is delivered after a certain deadline. You just need to be able to get rid of it. Um, and and look, somebody can set that time to, you know, days, weeks, forever, infinite. I'm not, not saying that, but there's, there's certainly some stuff where you want us to be able to say that. So I think that once you realize that, and I think that also, the word caching is not actually what many of the use cases want. Well, what they really want is something closer to S3 than, than an HTTP cache, right? They want a service that delivers data. They want a content delivery network, not a, a I might do something maybe some of the time network. Um, so I want, and I understand that some relays will be designed that way, some won't, but it should certainly be possible to build relays that can make deterministic guarantees. Uh, I'm not saying all relays have to, but it should be possible. Um, and so I think this, so like on, the, so the, the, so I think that thinking about it that way at a meta level helps sort of drive a little bit of my thinking on some of the the stuff, um, the beginning and that like so for the question you just asked about like, hey, if you were in the middle of receiving an object and it timed out before you'd fully received it, could you forward it? And the answer would be so no. The application had deliberately said this data was not useful after that time, so it would not be delivered. You wouldn't forward it, right? It's just a simple rule of how to apply it. Um, and on the beginning end, I don't feel deeply strongly about that, but I do feel like think about what we're going to say about an object that just sort of gets trickled in and never really gets delivered. What are we going to do with that object in the system? What are we going to say about that failure at that edge case? Um, and maybe we have a better solution to it than this timeout, but this could be one of them. Um, so I lean towards the beginning. I lean towards there's a way to say that this, this data is not valid to be delivered by the system after this point in time. Um, and that's, you know, sort of like, like roughly as Will's use case too, the, the, the 30 minutes or something. 30 minutes may land in the middle of a GOP sequence, not at the, the edge of one, particularly with variable size GOP sequences. So I, I, I like that sort of direction that, that this is going on on those things. Um, I definitely think there's strong use cases for the, um, that when this expires, um, you you don't have to do a, a you know implosion of a million resubscriptions back towards the origin publisher um 
uh, to, to revalidate that, no, the data is really gone, that like it can just go to gone. And I can certainly accept that there'd be use cases that were the other way too, and that we should have a way of differentiating those two. I, like we should be able to support both. Um, but I, I definitely think for the, you know, the, the essence of real time is there's a point in time of which this data is no longer useful. So stop dealing with it. And that, that's what I want to be able to express in this stuff. Will, you're next. Yeah, I was I was also agreeing with the beginning. You know, an object can be 20 megabytes in size, and we're gonna as soon as you get the first byte, we're gonna start forwarding it. Uh, so we don't want to wait for the end of it uh, to make the timing. So I, I also agree the the beginning makes sense there. And I'm also seeing that there's this dichotomy of use case. We've got this real-time use case with very quick decisions, and, and we got a longer use case. So I'm, I, I do think it's an object level uh, property, but if all the objects in a group have the same max cache duration, then we should put it in the group header for efficiency like, like we do now. So we, we have an existing mechanism for compacting that information and, and we can use it, but it's, it's inherently and natively uh, relates to an object. To, to, to build on the point, um, the, the proposal here is to put it in this subscribe okay, so that would be like, a subscription and every uh, opposed to because this last week we discussed putting it in the uh, in the header and that has some other quirks. I, I don't agree with subscribe okay at all. It means it's consistent for every single object and group delivered under that subscription. And we've already discussed use cases here with where that's not true, right? I've I've got a track that's running for five hours and every and, and my model of a, a trailing window expiry, every, every single group because I'll do two second groups, it's going to expire at a different time. So I can't possibly put it in the subscribe OK. Okay. That well, just um, to clarify, I, the value is relative, right? So like it, that, it just means that every group is going to have the same relative uh, time based on its arrival. OK, that changes it, because I would want a fixed 30 minute relative for the whole track. So in that case, it's fine. But by putting it in subscribe, OK, we're forcing the situation, right? There's no flexibility. Everything must be the same. By allowing it to be a header-based property, those who want it to be the same can put it in there. It can be as compact as, as we can make it. But for those who have a future use case where it's not the same, it varies, say, due to legal reasons or some other strange event, there would be a mechanism in, in our architecture to allow that. I'm a little concerned with constraining it to be subscription-based only. Um, Luke, Lenma. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I'll keep. Uh, so I thought we were making good progress with decoupling uh, expiration from caching. Um, but then the last round, I think we only talked about expiration. Um, so for example, when you say, can uh, you deliver something that this duration has expired in the middle? And yeah, I mean, you would just go back to origin to fetch it. Like, this is just a cache hint. This is not an expiration timer. The content does not get the bit set in the flag saying it no longer exists. This is just a hint to the, the CDN say, hey, you should cache this for like 10 seconds. You know, just a hint. And if somebody comes in 15 seconds later and it's still in the cache for whatever reason, it's valid. Like, I think I would almost want to get rid of the word max from this uh, because max implies it's a timeout. It implies that you're not allowed to do something after a certain amount of time. Um, but really, the use case here is just telling a CDN, "Don't bill me for anything longer than this." Like, I, thirty, you know, thirty seconds is all I'm willing to pay for. Sure, somebody can request something from an hour ago. That's valid. Um, but uh, so I, I think we need to clarify that if if this is an expiration we're talking about, like this object is no longer allowed to be served, I think it's a completely separate conversation. If this is just a hint, like, please use this much RAM or please use this much disk, then something like simple like this works just fine. Mo, please be brief if you can. Three quick points. Agree with Luke that there are two very, very different use cases and um, it's not, we flip flop back and forth on which one we're actually talking about. Um, this one right now, as, as worded, uh, is talking about the hint, not the authoritative expiration. So, but most of the conversation is about authoritative expiration, which is confusing. On the hint, I don't think it's necessary. 
I don't think the endpoints will ever be able to manage the cache more intelligently than the actual relay network. Uh, so I don't I don't believe that it makes any sense to to hint for for uh, for anything for caching. Um, on the partial objects, uh, I just want to reiterate that there's a lot of cases where it's not one relay you're talking to. You may be able to you may be jumping relays. So there are cases where you you, you want to get the the end of of a of a group from a particular relay. So it's not unusual for a relay to have some objects, not necessarily the beginning of the group, but the end of the group. I think our middle model is kind of too simple that we're thinking about one relay serving the subscriber. It's not the case. So that's why we specify that objects are the are the atoms in in uh, in mock. And there was a reason for that. That's the cacheable entity. That's the addressable entity. And there's a reason for that. And we shouldn't we shouldn't go back and make groups that um, on the beginning versus end. I think we're fraught with with problems, if anything relies on the end of anything, the end of an object, the end of a group or whatever, because we're talking about tail drop in a lot of cases for prioritization or canceling. So it's it, it, it it's uh, it's too many new problems if you're timing things based on ends that never arrive. So I think it makes more sense for things to be on the beginnings. And that's really for content policy and for freshness on tight times. That's really what matters, when the content was produced. You want to expire things when things were a certain time after they're produced it doesn't really matter there you know when they were delivered it's a time from production is when they really expire so like the beginning of of objects makes more sense that's it okay thank you mo all right so our I, I, i've got a series of questions to ask the group um uh our objective today was was to reach sort of a consensus on on this proposal and uh, assuming that we could reach rough consensus then ian could go turn fairly mechanically turn it into a pr um, Ian, uh, we've talked a lot of different things here. Can you concisely articulate what the proposal is at this point? What you think you would write down if we were agreed to it? Um, it seems like people agree on beginning of object. I it seems like people agree on removing absolute time. Um, there are mixed feelings on the milliseconds versus seconds thing, but I guess I'd be inclined just to make it milliseconds because it literally burns a byte in the subscribe okay or two bytes, and I just don't. Who cares? Like, well, we can figure it out later. Um, the object granularity, I think, overall um, seems like it's fine and workable, even if in some cases it's a little bit weird. So I think that all, all of that seems sensible to me. I think the parts that we are currently a little bit hung up on are um, whether it expires, expires, or whether this is just a cache hint, and whether you really can't send it after this period of time expires, or whether it's, again, just a cache hint. And I think there's like at least two questions there, which is one is, can you send it after this time? Yes or no? Like, Or is it like a hard limit that without doing some sort of revalidation or something, you just can't send it? And then the other thing is, when this time is hit, does that just mean it's not in the cache or it shouldn't be cacheable or does it actually like change the object status? Um, I was still leaning towards the that it does not change the object status because that's like okay. Well, all right. So so we need so we need so we need to nail down something to talk so about. Those are the two things. Those are the two so, I think those are the two questions that like I mean we can add both. Like we can have two fields so, one that change the object status and one doesn't. I don't know. So, so I, I would propose that for the time being, we evaluate this is purely a cache hint and not an expires field. Um, and just so, okay, does, please raise your hand uh, if you do not understand proposal and have a clarifying question. Okay, going once, going twice. Okay, so I think we all understand what Ian would go off and write if we approve this now. Next question I'd like to ask is, I'd ask for anyone to raise their hand if they feel that adding this this feature, this option, whatever you want to call it, uh, would be like a very bad idea. Not because I don't see a use for it, but because like it's going to break the protocol, it's going to create some some really bad side effect, it's going to put an undue burden on implementers who don't care about the use case, et cetera, et cetera. Please raise your hand if you would like to articulate that viewpoint. Colin. You're muted. Yeah, no, here. Uh, so my my only so no, 
as long as this is not used as a reason not to put in the other similarly related things that meet yes. other use cases nope. that doesn't mean like as long as we're we're that, yeah we're yeah. still okay. getting this, to be clear yes. we're still doing something on delivery okay okay, okay. okay. Anyone, yeah. i'm cool with that that's a, that's good thanks is is a okay is there anyone who would like to lie down on the road over this that it's going to break mqt going once going twice Okay, I'm going to put out a poll question in Meet because people don't like it when I put it in Meet Echo. I can't get in Meet, and I should not be required to use Meet to participate in the process. So, um, what do you got for me? Meet. All oh, right. Oh, sorry, Meet's fine. Sorry, sorry, Meet Echo. This is so confusing <laughs> the name. Sorry, sorry. I can't, I'm, and I normally can get in Meet Echo. I don't know why I can't get in today, but I'm fine. Okay, so I'm doing a Google. So, does anyone object to a, does anyone object to a Google Meet poll? Okay. All right, hopefully that worked. All right, so that you should you should see a poll, uh, maybe under the. I'm not sure what what your UI is showing you, but uh, in the lower right, there's like a three shapes, a circle, a square, and a triangle, that should guide you to the polls if you're not finding it otherwise. Clarify question, Martin. Uh, as worded, it says useful addition to mock. I yes. thought you were asking, are you are you willing to lay down the road and die? Um, no, no, that was the previous question. I wanted to tease out if they so like the question is so we're tr I'm trying to see what I'm gauging here is there a rough consensus this is worthwhile because I think we've already established that nobody is going to like storm out of MUQT if, and like <laughs> abandon the protocol if we have this feature. I think we all I think we've all agreed that we kind of understand what Ian is proposing to write. And if we have rough consensus that this is useful, then I think you should go write the PR. If we don't think it's useful, but we're not opposed to people using it, is that a yes or a no? I think that's a no. That's you a don't no. think yeah. it's useful. Yeah. Right? It's useful to me, but I don't I, I, yeah. I, I want to prevent it if somebody thinks it's useful to them. We already know that nobody wants to prevent it. OK. OK, we have 11 votes. Uh, does, does anyone need more time? Okay, let the record show that eight people said yes, this was useful, and three said it was no useful. Uh, I, I mean, I think, Alan, you and I would agree this is probably rough consensus that this is okay to add. I, I think so. I mean, and if there's okay. new data down the line, implementers come and say this is horrible, or I never touched that parameter, that's new data, and we can yeah. reevaluate okay. it down the line. So, Ian, Ian go, go forth, be fruitful, and, and write a PR, and uh, we can we can argue about spelling online, hopefully, and then land the sucker <laughs> and achieve something prior to the, the in-person interim. Okay. Uh, we don't have time for the terminology discussion, of course. Uh, I guess like seconds on it or less, which is that I went in there. There was a discussion on list. I made a straw man proposal. I got a little bit of feedback. I wrote a PR, which I approved it, and Suas approved it. So Ian should merge it. Or if you, <laughs> if you want to lie down in the road, go review that PR. I forget the number. It's in there. It's I will. I will review the PR today as well. Um, if it. If it seems like it has rough consensus, then I'll merge it, given it's editorial. Yeah, but, just uh, let people know, like it. So we it, uh, its publisher is anybody who sends objects. A subscriber is anybody who sends a subscribe. The original publisher is the first guy. The end subscriber is the last guy. Upstream is towards the original publisher. Downstream is toward a subs the end subscriber. I added a definition of a relay, which we didn't have. Um, and I don't, I mean, the definitions are probably fungible. And then I replaced every instance I could find of producer, consumer, and sender, and receiver with a few exceptions. Okay. Thanks. Um, all right. So that, that concludes that. Now, Alan, do you want to talk about next week? Yeah. So um, I said there's a bunch of stuff, uh, which is uh, in the working group materials repo um, that's hopefully going to help. One is the draft agenda, which sort of talks about how we're going to try to approach this problem broadly. And um, I already saw the the, um, the note from Ian that maybe one thing that would help inform it is if people can come and say like, in my application, I want to send the bits, I want the bits to arrive in this order in these cases, like that is super useful. If people 
can't articulate the order in which they would like to receive things, there is no way we can build a priority system that will do it. So um, that I think is very useful time if people can say like, here are some cases that I really want. I have these bits at the relay and I want them to arrive at the client in this order. Like, please let me know that you have a presentation and I will find, we'll find a way to get you on the agenda for that. Um, the other one is, so I tried to write down use cases. Apparently I suck at writing use cases and they all sound like solutions. It's not supposed to. Um, but anyway, and I wasn't alone. Cullen and John helped, but there's a document in the working group materials repo that covers- I, I suck as much as Alan, sorry. <laughs> Luke was right in his comment. Um, so please look at that. Please provide suggestions. It's just meant to get the conversation going about what are the different things you might want to do with priority? Should we include them? We, we will come hopefully spend some time in the in the, in face to face, agreeing on what are the problems we are actually going to try to solve um, using priority, and which ones we don't think we're going to try to solve. Um, so, if you think there's problems that aren't even written down yet, please find a way to get them written down. Um, there's another document there which talks about like kind of questions about solutions. When you're thinking about solutions, have you thought about does it meet these use cases? What is the model, etc.? And also, sort of like here's a set of things you could use to evaluate like how good a job does this solution do versus that one. So. Hopefully that gets people's juices going. We'll have Monday to kind of talk free form during hackathon if people are there. Um, feedback, feedback, welcome. Trying to make the most use of time. I guess the one question I would have is like, do we need to spend more time talking about, should we allocate in-person time for delivery timeouts? Which I, I view as orthogonal to priority, but not orthogonal, it's part of all part of delivery. So, and I don't think we're there yet. So I don't know what people think. But I would like some time for it because if we, get to the point of talking about what we want to send, at some point, we're gonna to wanna to talk about like what we never wanna send. I mean, I think it's gonna come up. And so it'll be natural, I, th I think it'll naturally dovetail into the conversation, even though technically I agree, if I have a, mem a machine with infinite memory, it's just about what to send and technically like, you know, that doesn't matter, but it, it kind of matters. So, I don't know. Okay, uh, maybe you and maybe you and Martin and I can think about like where where we think. I mean, I'm just worried it's going to take a large fraction of time, and it's it's sort of semi orthogonal to priority, which we have been saving for this. And I don't want to detract too much from that end goal, but I agree that we they're both related to delivery, and it's important. I mean, if we get our, our head around the like all the not the quote unquote use cases, I don't know all the things that people want to do with bits, um, then I hope that after we talk about delivery for a bit, we could talk about like this topic and it would end up kind of dovetailing, but I don't know. Okay, I think that's enough for me to say, but please do a little homework if you're coming to the interim so that we can make the most of our time. Okay, on that note, I would like to thank Will for taking notes. That was very helpful. Please consider uh, f f taking the mantle from Will next time and, and taking notes. I also want to say that the virtual schedule is now, lo is now locked in for through Vancouver on the data tracker. So, and July is a little bit wonky. It is not anything like every Wednesday morning. So, so please take a look at that and update your calendars accordingly. Uh, and uh, we will see you in Seattle next week. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.